All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I have a returning guest. He is a gym owner, master's athlete, Jeff Zawali. How you doing? Hey, good to see you again. Yeah, it was a great time the first time we talked, and I'm looking forward to kind of talking to you about the Open, your new gym, which is – I. If anybody has if anybody hasn't seen his gym yet, it is amazing. Like the the design, the paintings, all that stuff. But we'll we'll go we'll go over that later on in the podcast. But um, I want to talk to you about the open. So you yeah. you did very well for yourself in the open, I think. I, I mean, I was happy with where I finished. Yeah, and, and yeah. where did you where did you finish for the? I for the just listeners? looked before, just because sometimes it changes with scores coming in, but I worldwide in my age category i was 139th that's awesome and and was that 91st in the u.s nice and so was that kind of the goal or were were you trying to aim higher what what was the Uh, thought going into the open well i mean since they expended to 20 25 percent uh i kind of went in with the attitude of, of one and done rather than beating myself up although i was very close to repeating 24.2 okay only because I had messed up so many times with the double unders. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still finished in the top, I think, 93, 94 percentile. But it was just my ego kind of <laughs> knocking on the door and saying, do this again, do this again. And again, the ego kicks in thinking I would have not, would have been nice to finish in the top 100. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I'm going to move forward to the semifinal. So why beat myself up? So mm-hmm. I was, yeah. So I was pretty happy. I was trying to do the one and done, like I did last year, and just call it a day. Yeah, but yeah. I, I was, I was happy. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's what I've done lately. It's just like one and done. So because it's like, you know, you, you can you can think about it like during the weekend, saying, "Oh, I should have done it faster at this spot." I could definitely like because you, you you know, and everybody knows, like if you do it again, you're probably gonna get better. But yeah, yes and no. I mean, I also have the philosophy that I think mentally for me, I like the unknown okay. going into that workout yeah. and pushing as hard as I can because you don't know where that dark place is quite going to be and how it's going to feel. Mm-hmm. At what point during the workout, doing it again, you know what's coming. <laughs> and I think that for me, it I always kind of like, you kind of put on the brake a little bit to save some in the gas tank. Yeah. And it never, it, sometimes it never works out for me, but yeah, I, uh, I definitely, I definitely tried to game the system on 24.1, which was the dumbest thing ever. Like I would take like 10 second breaks here and 10 second. Oh, no. And I'm like, I, after, after I did it I, and I, I finished it, it was in like 1230. It was not impressive, but I was, you, you yeah. did. You, I mean, I was looking at your scores. You did pretty well. I, I, I did. I did good. I mean, did you did you move forward? Yeah, I'm in the quarterfinals. Yeah. But the, here, here's the thing. Like, I I've talked about this before. Like, I I don't have an affiliate I can do this stuff with. Uh, so like the gym that I go to is like a 24 hour powerlifting gym, and so they don't have rings. They have a rope. They have a pull up bar. But the problem is the pull up bar. Well, they're they're changing it now. But the pull up bar originally was like up to here on my wrist like so this this much of my hand was like over the bar and so trying to do like pull-ups or whatever it's not really gonna gonna cut it and like everything's like all spaced out too so it's like i would have to like take time through the middle of the day move all this stuff over and then kind of go from there but like all my buddies are like saying you should do quarterfinals just just do it just go to just go to the gym you know go to the you know pay the pay the fee the drop in fee and then kind of go and i'm like but i don't want to pay you know 25 dollars every workout i do yeah so yeah i mean if i if i was at a gym and like there's a there's a gym that will welcome me with their open arms uh northeast uh northeast georgia crossfit which is like a great gym if anybody's around the gainesville area you should check it out um you know shameless plug uh but anyway like i just don't want them to, because I, I think there's maybe one or two other people that made it to quarterfinals at that gym, mm-hmm. and I don't want to. I don't want to like you know say, hey, I want to do it, and then interfere with time at the gym and all that stuff. So it, it is, you know, I'm I'm kind of making excuses, but yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay the fifty dollars and do it. But I think we had about 
10 members make it and only half are going to actually go forward and pay to actually enter it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and what do you think about, um, supposedly for these, um, quarterfinals, they don't have a floor plan and the other people from the gym can do the workout too, as well. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I was, I've been listening to podcasts about that. I mean, it was, it was the same way with the open. There was no, uh, floor taping needing needed, although we still taped it out because after the first workout, the 24.1, we didn't tape any of the floors down and it just felt for our Friday night lights. Like it was just any other class. Mm -hmm. It didn't have that aesthetic that we wanted to kind of build up for a Friday night light in the open workout. Mm -hmm. So the, the next two, even though we didn't necessarily need tape lines, we did it like we have in past seasons and just taped out the floor. So it's like sectioned off. So it felt like more like the open. Um, but yeah, they're saying that this one, uh, that you will need tape lines for the quarterfinals and people in the, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'll be a, a just as accessible and approachable as the open was. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Yeah. So do you, do you think they should have had like a one rep max lift on the first three were I, so I'm biased. I say yes, but cause I know I could uh, do really good on that, but yeah, I mean, and I'm surprised they did it only because in past years, they've always had that like part B where you do some sort of conditioning work and then the time and rate remaining, you have a one max lift. Uh, so I knew they said they were going into this to make it a little bit more approachable and accessible, mm -hmm. which I kind of liked, I mean, I think we had probably about 60% of our members participating in it. Um, so I kind of like that, but I, it didn't feel on, on the paper, on paper, it didn't look like open workouts, but when you did them, it felt like open workouts. Yeah. Yeah, you know definitely. I mean? Yeah. And especially with the uh, 24.3 with the muscle ups. So, yeah. uh, when, when I did it, so it was like super early in the morning, but there was one guy that said that said like once I made it to like the muscle ups and stuff like that, he's like, just remember one extra rep moves you further away from that other person. And like, I was like, sh I'm part of my friends. I'm like, shit, like that really hit. And so I'm like, that's why I really have to like, like haul and just get yeah. as many muscle ups as I can. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm still working on those. So yeah, Luckily, so, I didn't have to do them. Yeah. So, so, um, I know you've been posting a lot on TikTok about your muscle up progression. So how is, have you got any tips from anybody? Like what's, I what's mean, going I, on with that? I think I have tried every progression out there. I've got so many people DMing me now in terms of tips and tricks and progressions. Everything works from like the hips up and the hips below that. It's like, I'm pulling dead weight up to the bar. I just <laughs> cannot get my brain connected to my hip yeah to get it to do what i need it to do because all those progressions where you're on a band or a box sure yeah on, on a band or a box they're easy mm -hmm. you take that band or box away and it's uh, no the guy uh i don't know if you follow him uh R rx gymnastics uh, yeah i just actually i just followed him after you were talking about it yeah he's been sending me all kinds of some of them are better than others but yeah. then some of these I mean, so some of the things that they've sent me, it's like the progressions are harder than the bar muscle up. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, there's no way. <laughs> just sliding on a ball and, you know, most of those things don't work for me. But I, I've gotten them before. But what happened was I started getting the hang of it right before COVID. Mm -hmm. And then the gym sh shut down for COVID and we didn't have uh, a rig set up for about a year, 14 months. So for 12, 14 months, we had, you know, we were outside or mm -hmm. closed. So I kind of lost everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to learn all that back again, but yeah. I'm not going to give up. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think the RX gymnastics, one of the pages they're talking about like muscle up progressions where you hold two lacrosse balls on the pull up bar and just hang yes. there and yeah. start doing pull up. Uh, so I saw that I was like, Oh, I, I think I could do that. And so I did it literally like the first time, 10 seconds on that bar was holding it and I yeah, for dear life. And it took, it felt like an infinity. It just hurt so bad. Well, when, when I finally get them, I was telling one of our coaches, I'm going to 
put together a series of reels of what progressions work and are shit and which ones really are effective. Absolutely. You should make that a YouTube video. That it would is, kill. I mean, Absolutely kill. It, yeah. And there, there's, there's a huge population of us that are having the same problem with this hip extension. Mm -hmm. I just can't get it. So. Yeah. I, uh, so actually speaking of that, so, um, when I, I went to Florida like this week, but it will, uh, when this comes out, it'll be like two weeks, two weeks prior. Um, and this guy was trying to learn muscle ups. And so he kind of got the hip like movement down, but the problem was, was like trying to get over the bar. Like it's like move his like upper body. So I told him, I'm like, I, I learned, I learned this from wad, uh, wad prep. So, um, put a hat on like very loosely and then like whip your head over the bar. And if the hat doesn't fall off, that means you didn't whip hard enough. And so he did it and actually like just snapped. It was just like, Oh, okay. I got it. And so then he was like, okay, now how can I string two up? Oh. And he's like, okay. I'm like, okay, well this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So when you're up here, don't push immediately off, drop down a little bit, then push off. And then get that like last kip of like to get up from the bar to get a second one. And he's like, oh, okay. And so and he pushed off and he got it. Like he, he definitely chicken winged it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I go in it like every other day and practice for about 20 or 30 minutes, but there are definitely progressions that work a lot better. Yeah. In terms of the, the turnover uh, and, and learning that. So, um, yeah, still working on it. That and ring muscle ups are the only two movements after doing crossfit for 11 years that i still don't have yeah well i mean in plus like you said before like a year and a half of not having a rig yeah so that's that's very very hard right. so but, but um i i know crossfit invictus has a great muscle up video i've been following them them as well yeah, yeah. i don't know yeah. what the guy's name is but yeah i've saved a lot of the ones that he's posted yeah, the, the one when they had like the, I think it was the first ring muscle ups that came up or like the second round or whatever. Like I, like I saw him and like he said the one part where you like actually like whip your arms out right when you're like almost parallel from like the floor. Then you pull your arms and then just quickly come in and it should help a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's, it's all progressions. Like from what I, God. Uh, Invictus is right down the street from us. Yeah. So you could just walk over there and say, Hey, help me with the ring muscle ups. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but so, so you said you were doing the quarterfinals. So what, what do you expect might come up for quarterfinals? Well, from what they've been saying, I think they're going to see the same kind of approachable, accessible type of, in terms of being able to do it at like a home gym, I think mm -hmm. I, I doubt you're going to see you know, last year there was rope climbs. I don't know if you'll see those this year or not. I think you'll see heavier barbell the, in the quarterfinals for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and probably more higher gymnastic skills. Bar, so for my age group, 60 and over, um, we did not have bar muscle ups in the open. So our progressions were chin over bar, chest to bar for that one. Oh, okay. Uh, so, but in the quarterfinals is where we start to see bar muscle ups, ring muscle ups and handstand walks. Okay. So, now, now do you, now do you think that like, I know, I think they said they were doing like four workouts, I think, I believe. Four. It's so they, said four scores. they said four workouts. Okay. So there could be a, a part B on, on one of them. Okay. So do you, do you think that like the first workout that comes up is going to be like kind of an easy one? And then once the second one hits, that will be like the, the, the divider mm -hmm. compared to like the elites to, you know, the people that just scratch the bottom of the quarterfinals. Uh, I don't know if it will be segmented like that. I tend to think it's going to be, I mean, it could, but it could be a workout where as you progress throughout the workout, the skill level gets harder or the weight gets heavier, sort of mm -hmm. like a ladder. So that will kind of where people will break because just like you said, getting that one bar muscle up is going to move you further ahead. So I think in our age category, now that they're throwing the bar muscle ups in, that's where the break's going to come for us, um, as well as the weight, increasing the weight. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 
I don't know. Yeah. We'll okay. Yeah. 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 Have, I, you I done, would... have you ever done the quarterfinals? No. Um, I've so last year I didn't do the open because I moved to it. I moved to this house and like, I just didn't know like the area that well. So and like the gyms, I don't know anybody at the gym. So it was like kind of, I didn't want to walk in there and say, Hey, I'm here to do the open and like kind of interfere with their community or whatever. But like CrossFit communities, they're, they're welcoming with open arms. They're like, Hey, come on in. You're fine. Hey, Hey, I'm so-and-so. But, uh, but then the year before that I didn't make it into quarterfinals, but like, when I first started, I was like in like the 90th percentile, 91st percentile. Then it kind of dipped a little bit. And then now I'm going, this is like the first time I actually made it to the quarterfinals. Okay. So I do think CrossFit needs to create a little bit more energy around the quarterfinals. Yeah. Than they have been like, like make an announcement, like to do the open mm -hmm. since they've expanded it from 10 to 25% to get people a little bit more excited about it because I still feel it's kind of uh, a little bit lackluster in terms of the excitement around it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I agree. It was, it was almost like the open too. Like I, I know a lot of people when they saw the workouts, they're like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah. come on, yeah. come on. Like, and it was like very disappointing. Yeah. I think, I think when I saw 24.2, I was like very disappointed in that workout. And I'm like, I'm like, this is so lame, like so lame, you know, I, obviously like, I'm not a programmer, so, you know, I could try to make a better workout, but you know, that's what they want to do. But it's like, can you add something else, like a little bit more weight to make it a little bit more difficult or, or something? The thing that I couldn't get over is how much hinging we had to do. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And it's but, like, a, it's like a mile for me to do those like dumbbell snatches, like, cause I'm six, six. So it's like, takes forever for me to get up there. And e even the deadlifts and rowing, like, like rowing is kind of easy for me, but, but yeah. So that's another it. reason why I'm glad I didn't redo both of those workouts because mm -hmm. of just my lower back. I mean, my lower back after the first one was feeling it from those yeah. burpees and deadlifts. Yeah. Yeah. And like, were you standing up the whole time during those um, burpees or were you kind of like just barely getting up and then like jumping over? Uh, I mean, I, I stayed as low as I possibly could. <laughs> as, low as, I, a, as low as a six year old guy can stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, with, with your GM, did they, did the, did the, 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 your clients and stuff, did they like the open or like, what were their thoughts? Yeah. I, th I think mainly because we had a lot of, uh, first timers doing it. Mm. So they didn't know what to expect. Uh, so I think for them, they really enjoyed it. Okay. But I think for the se more seasoned athletes, we heard a lot of comments like you just made, like, you know, I can't believe we're not seeing heavy weights. Um, uh, I mean, again, like I said, on paper, it didn't necessarily look like open workouts but when you're like you're in it it felt like, still felt like an open workout yeah you yeah know, I mean, um yeah so someone could say there was heavy weights involved with 24.3 with the 130 with the 135 thrusters yeah i mean true true so, but yeah. typically you would see something like a ladder so, yeah sometimes. yeah you know uh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I don't think they're going to do another like open announcement or like that. I think there's just going to be like, okay, here are the workouts, go for it. And you know, make sure you videotape everything and whatever. I'm glad there weren't shuttle runs and I'm glad there weren't wall box. Yeah. I, I bet you there's going to be shuttle runs in this work and the next round. I would tend to think there probably will be. Yeah. And then I, I think there's probably gonna be wall walks too. Yeah. I think because, the, the, yeah. Because, well, I mean, I, I've gotten really good at wall walks. So I think, like, but when I got the fair. first, yeah, when the first wall walks came around, I, I was dying. But now it's like I was doing like an EMOM uh, with the program I'd follow, uh, Misfit Athletics. But, um, but like, we did like a wall walk progression. So it was like, do like three or four wall walks within a minute and then rest 30 seconds and then keep on doing that for like 10 minutes. I mean, we, that first, 
season that the Open had wall walks. We never did them in class. I mean, occasionally we did them as a warm up, mm -hmm. but very rarely did we ever do them as part of a programming. <laughs> and then after that, you know, yeah, we do it all the time. Yeah, it, isn't it funny where like something comes up in the open and like now everyone like over programs yeah. that movement just to get it down. Yeah. And just like when dumbbells, I mean, no one had dumbbells. Yeah. And then the first season that they had dumbbells, everyone out bought them. Yeah. Yeah. And they bought like metal ones or like yeah. something like that. And they, or people were doing the work. It's like metal dumbbell plates and like just dropping it and making a mess. Yeah. So. <laughs> but uh, I also saw you doing a couple, another progression too. Um, on, I think it was on TikTok where you were doing like the um, standalone, like handstand push up or something like that. Oh, yeah, we're just playing around in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that something you're trying to aim for too? Uh, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to learn the handstand walks more like from a gymnastics point of view rather than the legs flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I've been focusing mainly on that handstand hold and learning that first freestanding handstand hold, uh, and then also practicing from the kind of like the crow position into a straight freestanding uh, handstand and then okay. progressing to the wall walk from there or to the handstand walk. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's um, my legs flail like all over the place. That's what kills me. Like um, my, one of the goals I have is trying to do like a, uh, a 180 handstand walk, like go down, turn oh, around yeah. and come back. Yeah. yeah you, you've seen them. Oh, yeah. It's so, like, I'm on day four and I'm so close. And it's just like that last 45 degrees just like gets me every single time. And like for today, when I put the one I posted today, I swear, I thought I had it swear. I thought I had it. Like I was moving. I was like, okay, okay, okay. And then all of a sudden it was just like fell for fell backwards. And I was like, I oh, fell forward. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. It was so close. Yeah. Is that what you're mainly working on right now? No. Uh, well, obviously the gymnastics work, but it was like, I I'm pretty good at doing handstand walks, like on a straight line. Like that's, I don't have an issue with that. Cause like it's all the shoulder strength that I've been working on and you know, the volume. And so I was like, okay, I need to add it a little bit more because, uh, the, pro like with the program, they have like a handstand walk, um, like jungle course whatever they call it like so you put like cones in certain areas yeah. so you like walk in different directions so i was like all right well let me work on the 180 first and then kind of zig then work on zigzagging so at least i can know like how my body's gonna work when i go through like all those like different progressions and stuff so and so once i get the 180 down then the zigzagging is gonna work and then i have done I think like 45 pound plates in front of like a handstand walk and a step, like, you know, walked over it. I've done, I've done that. So, but I haven't done that in a while. Like, I think the next one is probably like do like a ramp or something like that or stairs. See, so I'm learning, trying to learn the basics of the handstand hold because I think that's where I went wrong on my bar muscle up is that mm -hmm. I went from strict pull ups to butterfly and never really mastered the kipping. And it's coming back to bite me now on the bar muscle ups. Yeah. So with the handstand walk, I'm really trying to learn kind of like being able to hold that position and then learning to walk from there. Yeah. So like maybe do like a, um, a wall walk and then just do like the hollow position on the top or something like that, or. Yeah. I mean, I'm really trying to focus, uh, what, what was it during, uh, it was the game season one year where they had to hold a freestanding handstand hold. Yep in the square yep. for as long as I can. So I'm trying to really learn that positioning and hold that. And then, I mean, I'm, I'm learning to walk as well, but literally learning that straight position because I, there are some people in our gyms, their legs are just like <laughs> wailing all over the place. So they're, they're, the back's completely like arched. Yeah. And I just want to really learn that gymnastics mm -hmm. positioning. Yeah. You know, um, I think I know Catherine Davis daughter did, did that, that did that workout. I, I believe she was the only one that actually did like the split leg just yeah. to balance, to keep straight. And like, so. yeah. yeah. And I think everyone else just like had their feet like straight up, like pointing yeah. their, their toes, toes pointed up. Yeah. Like that gymnastic. Yeah. 
so so yeah like i i've tried the scorpion where like you kick your legs forward like kind of like not like like you bend them and stuff like that and that absolutely jacks my back up every single time same and i'm so like i, I, I heard could... I herniated a disc like three or four years ago. No, oh, geez. When I see some of these guys in our gyms and their backs, it's like, shit, there's no way I'm going to do that. Yeah. And it's like, I've learned really quick not to do that. So it's just like, kick my legs up and then kind of see what happens. And then, you know, you, you, you pretty well. What's, yeah, I've done, I've done pretty good. And my thing is like, I think my legs are like, like connected together and pointed in the right direction. Then I look at the videos and they're just like, 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 like you said, like flailing right. all over the place. And it's just like, I really thought my legs were like in a, in a comfortable position <laughs> or like a, a solid position. So it wouldn't be having any issues. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is there any other movements you're trying to master before uh quarterfinals or just like an end of yeah, the year? I mean, just your typical get stronger, heavier weights, but in terms of gymnastics movements, those are the two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, I did see you have the Nike barbell, the orange one. Yes. Okay. So I've always wanted to like, I love hero barbell. Like that's literally them right there. So the best barbell I, I think, but how, how was the Nike barbell for you? Uh, I mean, I would say they're just as good as any of the other barbells that we have. I wouldn't necessarily go run out and buy one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, it was someone gave, gave it to us. So, uh, but it does its job. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have the weights too as well or no, no, no just the bar. Yeah. 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 I, I, I wanted to try it out and compare it to heroes barbell like compared to the Nike one because their spin is it's like nice. unreal. Have, have you tried their barbells before? No. You, oh man. Like I literally can like kick it and it would spin forever. Like not forever, but like it would spin for like a very, very long time. And it's like, it's super smooth pulling it up and then like just switching it over, especially on the snatch and the clean and jerk. Nice. So yeah, it's, um, def and they're California guys too. So they're the local, they're, you know, California dudes. So you might want to hit them up, hit them up or something. Or yeah. if, if you need a barbell, I can, I can hook you up too. So, okay. <laughs> but, um, so I do wanted to talk about your gym. Yeah. So I know the previous podcast we did together, you would move, I think you moved like every single year to like a different location. And so I like you moved into this location and like the backdrop, the, you know, the design work and like, it looks like the space too, as well is like absolutely amazing, like amazing. And so did, did that, when you look, when you looked at that place, was all that stuff there already or, or were you like, just when you walked in, you're like, oh my gosh, this is like a blank canvas. I could do whatever I want with this thing. So this is our ninth location in 10 years. <laughs> State Classy CrossFit, by the way. Yeah. They call it, uh, they, they've nicknamed us, I think, the Gypsies here in San Diego. Um, so we were outside still from COVID before we moved into this location. And we had looked at it maybe a year or two prior to when we moved in about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And when we first looked at it, it was a blank ca canvas. And when we went back, uh, we got a call from the landlord, the investment group, and said that the previous tenant was moving out. So we went and looked at it. The previous tenant had turned it into a event space. So they painted all the murals. They completely turfed the back. They put in lighting. They redid the bathrooms. They put a a big ass fan in they put a sound system in i mean it was basically set up for events yeah or they would do uh art shows they would do raves in there uh they were having raves in there and they soundproofed the two wooden bay doors out to go out the back oh my gosh the, the neighbors wouldn't hear the music yeah so when we walked in it was like shit. this is like a perfect gym location because it we've always been in those kind of like industrial areas that looked mm. really grungy like the old crossfit gyms but when we walked into this it was something that was very atypical of what a crossfit gym looked like so everything was done the only thing that we invested money in was we put the rolled flooring in 
and we install uh, put a bath a shower in. Okay. But everything that you're seeing on those on those videos was already in that space from the previous tenant. The reason why they moved out was because the the zoning is not zoned for assembly. So every time they would have a large event of over I don't know, 75 or 100 people, mm -hmm. the fire department would come and shut them down because it wasn't zoned correctly. That's so crazy. Had, they basically had a choice of either investing even more money into it to bring it up to code or move out. And they had invested so much money into the space, as you can plainly see, they didn't want to put any more money in because they would never get it back. Mm -hmm. So luckily for us, it's zoned for instructional studio. So we were able to move in there and basically it was made for a CrossFit gym. Yeah. We have a, mezz we have a mezzanine. So uh, square footage wise, we have about 4,000 square foot outside. That's completely turfed. Uh, we have patio lights and then we installed um, a rigging outside uh, with sunshades. So, and being in San Diego, we learned from COVID, people love working out outside. And we would, we would have people from that would drop in, and our old, and our old space was a shithole. <laughs> I mean, because it was, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, trust me, it was, it was in an old outside roofing area. I remember, yeah, I, I remember that and very well. Rain, yeah. We would have to hang up tarps on the sides where the, the roller doors wouldn't close mm -hmm. and the water would just come in and we had the old horse mats in the water. I mean, I don't know why people were joining our gym in that time. We had one toilet. Uh, it, 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 it was awful. Um, <laughs> it was. Uh, and it was, people would walk in though and say, this is a cool space. And it, it had that grungy CrossFit. Yeah live and i think that's why people liked it mm -hmm. um but it was really hard i mean in the winter was for san diego was freezing it was like 45 50 degrees outside and san diego and still aren't i mean when it yeah rained. yeah now so when we moved in there into the new space we doubled the size uh so we have four thousand square feet outside we have about 3500 downstairs um uh, in the floor space and then upstairs, we have a, maybe another 2,000 square feet, 2,500 on the mezzanine. And then there's two offices that we're subleasing out to sports massage therapists. Okay. So we kind of split up the area that we have group class downstairs and then private private training on the mezzanine and the sports massage, massage therapist up in the offices. Okay, very the cool. Shower. Yeah, and then free parking out, street parking outside in San Diego. That can't beat that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now with with the mezzanine, like I know you said you have like two offices that you subleased out, but what can you can you put anything else up there at all? Or, uh, I mean, right now we're trying to just trying to grow our personal training mm -hmm. uh, business because we still have a lot of clients who are intimidated by CrossFit. Um, and it's we kind of view it as kind of like a a longer hopefully a longer onboarding to get them into group class. Yeah. But some of our personal training clients that want nothing to do with the group class model, they like coming in, working one-on-one -on -one with our coaches and kind of doing their own thing. Um, but right now it's primarily in that mezzanine area is for uh, open gym or private tra group uh, personal training. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Now, are you looking to expand into like, I know you have the CrossFit gym there, but like, are you looking to like expand into like a coffee shop, like in the place or not or just, or just like straight CrossFit? Yes. Straight CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, because there's, there's two other CrossFit gyms near us mm -hmm. nearby, uh, Invictus and Bear Republic. Both are downtown San Diego. We're located technically in Logan Heights, but it's about a mile, mile and a quarter. Um, but even though <clears throat> we're three CrossFit gyms, they're, fairly close by each other. We each have very separate or different communities that we've kind of like developed. Mm -hmm. Invictus is kind of like the, obviously the elite athletes, the competitive athletes and people who want to gravitate towards that. They're located downtown. 
Parking is kind of a minimum in San Diego downtown. Uh, Bear Republic is another downtown cross. That's where I started when it was East Village. They tend to get more of the city uh, downtown people who don't want to drive. Mm-hmm. Parking's at a minimum, 20, 30 year olds. And then stay classy is in Logan Heights. And we tend to get more than I'd say the 30, 40 year olds. It's funny that, you know, six or seven years ago, <clears throat> when a Friday night light after the open, we all be yeah, out, stay drinking, you know, till 11 o'clock after the open. Now everyone has kids, you know, <laughs> five or six women in the gym that are expecting. We've, we've kind of our age and community demographic has, is aging up a little bit. So, yeah. uh, so we tend to get more like beginners, intermediates, uh, that type of thing. Yeah. And, and it, and it doesn't seem well, obviously with, uh, instead of that tiger on the wall, whatever that the big, big yeah, tiger, tiger head on the yeah. wall, um, it doesn't seem intimidating compared to like, you know, maybe a new person going into Evictus where they see like all these elite athletes and, yeah. you know, training and whatnot. And I don't know if bear is the same thing with like, they have like some elite they're, athletes they're as well. Pretty, pretty good athletes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, and they see like your, the clientele that you have, and you know they're like oh okay this is more like uh you know just get your hour of fitness in go home hang out with the fam and then you know come back another day exactly i mean yeah. we still have some competitive athletes but for the most part well, i think we're really going after you know those people that are beginners that need to crossfit that really haven't been active that type of thing mm-hmm. now are you i am I, there was a there's a guy with that had a youtube video I think he was doing like trying to get 30 clients in 30 days. I forget. Oh gosh. Did you say, did you see that video? How we did it? No. So he would walk up to people in like Walmart or like some other, uh, gosh, I wish I remember the, 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 um, the channel, but, um, he would like talk to people about CrossFit and say, Hey, you can, you have a free session to come and try it out and kind of see what happens just to gain, gain more customers because he didn't he thought that crossfit didn't really help them get the clients that they needed oh. for the gym and so he was trying i think it was like 30 for 30 or something like that so he was like at least like connecting with somebody one one or two people in a day and like going out when he's going grocery shopping or or, or whatever and did it work i i guess he had a couple he had a couple people that showed up so i don't know if they became like um I, I don't know if they, they became like full year members or anything like yeah. that. Cause I, I want, I saw like one video and I didn't really follow through on it. So. Well, it's funny because I, I personal train and coach at another uh, gym uh, in North park. It's more of like a boutique, smaller garage gym. Mm-hmm. And uh, they know that I own a CrossFit gym in Logan Heights. And a couple of them would say, Oh, I can never do CrossFit. It's like, you're doing CrossFit here. We just don't call it that. Because I think CrossFit still has a hurdle to cross in terms of getting people to understand that this is for everybody. Yeah. And not just for someone who's physically fit. Uh, but yeah, they will say, well, I can never do that. Mm-hmm. It's like you're doing CrossFit now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like there's this one girl that's uh, a trainer at the gym that I'm at. She's like, oh, I think by the end of the year, end of the summer, like the school year, I'll start doing CrossFit. I'm like, you're already doing it. You're teaching these hit classes like it's the same exact thing. Like, I don't get it. Like, it's like you see me like, okay, you may be intimidated of, of me, like seeing me lift the heavy weight, but like you can use a barbell and get the same stimulus that I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. And like, they don't get that. And I'm like, I keep on, I keep on telling them like, just do it. You'll be yeah. fine. I'll, yeah. I'll even, I'll even like give you, I'll even like take pictures of the program that I do and send it your way to kind of, you know, be like, Hey, check, try, try it out. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, even the personal training clients that I program for at stay classy that, you know, we're working up on the mezzanine doing their private training and they'll look down. It's like, Oh, I can never do that. It's like, you're doing that up here we're just modifying everything yeah it's just yeah. like it's just less weight and maybe yeah. more reps or whatever again that crossfit name or branding sometimes intimidates people still yeah so are you still getting a good amount of people coming in to check the place out or even even drop-ins as well 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the, the what we're focusing on now is because it was an event space. We have the opportunity to actually like hold bigger events in the gym. So uh, last September, we partnered with Sarah Wilkinson, who is the widow for that started Chad, the Chad workout. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So we were one of the official three official locations in the U.S. for Chad last year. Okay, very cool. So I think we had. I don't know, like 130 people there that day um, uh, doing Chad. Um, we've had a couple, uh, we're getting ready to do a, or partnered with a firm here in uh, San Diego. I believe it's called Locally Well. And we're having our first health and wellness um, event with vendors and workshops. Um, that type of thing because even though uh we're doing events most of them are being held outside mm -hmm. so that we're not running into the issue that the last uh tenant did mm -hmm. so as long as they're outside we're fine okay um, okay um so we're focusing a little bit on how we can use because obviously when we moved from the last location to this location we doubled the size Mm -hmm. So with that comes double the rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so subleasing out those two offices upstairs definitely have, has helped. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to utilize the space in other ways. Uh, one of our members teaches pole dancing. So <laughs> okay. She, uh, professionally. Yeah. So she's having a uh, two day pole dance workshop this weekend. She's running the space out for us for about 20 or 30. 30 people okay. doing a workshop there. So we're doing more of those type of things um, to generate revenue other than just from group class and private training. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they don't really need poles. All you need to do is you get a barbell and put weights on the bottom and they can just spin around that way. <laughs> and, and, and then uh, people in the class have actually wanted to see if we could put a permanent pole in. <laughs> Right, right off the mezzanine, so you could just exactly. slide down like a firefighter. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so have have you? Um, I I know with like other like the doing the pole dancing and like other venue, like you know other things and stuff. Are have you ever thought about doing like a level one or a level two certification at your gym, or have you talked to CrossFit about that? Actually, we're having uh, we're doing a level one May fourth and fifth. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we're getting. It. Hopefully it will go well enough that we can do an uh, L2, but mm -hmm. we've, we're doing our first L1 workshop or certification uh, next month. Okay. Now for, um, for that to work and to come into your gym for that L1. So do they pay you like some of the money for, you know, yeah. rent to the space out? Like how, how does, how does that work? So there's certain requirements that you have to have in terms of available space, bathrooms, stuff like that so they know they can fit that number of people in so what they kind of screened us to see if the location kind of fit what they the basic needs mm -hmm. i think they end up paying us a thousand dollars to rent the space okay uh, which isn't bad and no. then uh, we have to uh then we have to provide snacks and beers <laughs> on <laughs> the first night yeah uh, but my uh, business partner went and he got his, uh, redid his L1 a few months ago. And uh, he said, no one stays. They all go home. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I think they pay us $1,000. And, oh, and then we get two, uh, two uh, L1 spots for free. Oh, cool. Okay. So we're, uh, we're giving one to one of our members who's going to become a coach. And the other one's going to our one of the sports massage therapists. Okay. That's kind of right. nice. Yeah, yeah. And um, with the new changes in CrossFit too, of like the owners or whoever, I, I, is it the owners or a coach needs to have at least one of those guys that need to have a level two? Yeah. So yeah. how? Yeah, yeah. So you. So how? How do? How did you? What do you think about that? And like, what are you guys going to do for that? I mean, uh, one of us will probably end up getting the L two. Uh, I think our affiliate uh, renews in September fee we're news in september so we have a year after that to get it so we're you know we're necessarily not in any rush or have to but mm -hmm. uh i mean both the owners here don't coach 
at the gym. Uh, so I, I, I get what they're trying to do in terms of raising the standard. Mm -hmm. uh, all of our coaches already have their L2. So at least the coaches on the coaching floor are, are kind of certified there already in terms of the level of coaching staff that we have. Yeah. L2s and L3s. Um, for the owners to be required to get that, I think it depends on where you are, where you are in your CrossFit career. You know, we're 10 years into it. Is having an L2 at, for one of the owners really going to be of benefit and value to running the business? Personally, for us, I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, I would have rather had them require us to do more of like, I, I want to know how to run the business. Yes. Yes. Lead funnel, yeah. social media marketing, that type of thing. Um, because I've got a great coaching staff. I got a great GM. I've got a great head coach uh, is investing another $1,200,000 into that really going to elevate us as a business. No, but I, I, I get, I understand why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And including the, was it the $2,500 affiliate fee now? Uh, well, we went, we're going from 3000 to 4,500. So oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So it's going up about a hundred dollars a month. Uh, and, you know, and having worked in the franchise world for 30 years, um, I'm glad we're not a franchise business. I don't want to be a franchise business. Mm -hmm. I like being a licensing model. Um, do I think they should be providing us something for that licensing fee? Um, I don't, I don't necessarily feel like the, it, I'm, I expect it, but when you have what, 13,000, 14,000 affiliates and you're trying to grow a brand, um, just kind of letting us kind of like succeed on our own may have worked 10 years ago when there wasn't an F45 and an orange theory yep. and stop and everything else out there. That's basically taking what we owned and kind of, kind of stealing kind of a lot of that mm -hmm. the competitions all has changed. So I think they need to be providing us more things that we can pull from, but not necessarily. Um, I don't expect it from them. It's sort of like a smorgasbord of things. Like I would prefer that they come up with like certifications or seminars that we can pay for to learn social media marketing, that type of thing. I know the basics are out there already. Yeah. Pretty basic, you know? Yeah. So, or, or, or you can do it. True. Because. Well, so I, I don't know where, let me, before you, before you finish. Okay. 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 Uh, I think what you've seen is because CrossFit HQ hasn't provided it. Other businesses have popped up to provide it. Mm -hmm. So two brain, uh, best hour of the day, uh, fit affiliate. They've developed these third party mentorship programs that are providing that level of service. So it's not really coming from CrossFit anymore. It's these other entities that have come up and they're doing great with it. I listen to their podcasts all the time. They have yeah. some really great information. I learn more from them than I'm learning from CrossFit HQ. And which that should not happen at all. Which, which is my point is that when you have 14,000 affiliates and you are paying a, a licensing fee, I think we have an issue when I'm learning more about running the business from them than I am to the brand that I'm representing. Mm -hmm. And I think their level of communication also needs to continue to level up because I found out about the affiliate fee increase from morning chalk up. <laughs> so again, when you're in it as an affiliate owner and you're having to get information from third party uh, entities, I think, yeah, it needs to level up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you should start a class on on social, social media. media. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can do it. I mean, 
Yeah. The the only way, the only reason why, like, I mean, not the only reason, but like, you know, the first time meeting you was mainly through TikTok, which yeah. you blew up in. And then like, all of a sudden, like after the podcast we did, like you were starting getting like, ab- like brand deals and like all these things coming yeah. up. And I'm like, holy crap, like this guy is killing it. Like he, he like he knows how to work the social media stuff. And there was a there was a point I was making more for more from brand deals than I was at my affiliate. That was that's insane. It's but like, but you you know you I mean uh, you know you know the space of social media and like how it works and you've probably seen a lot of you know gyms that post like that that have a social media page and you're like like let's say you go on vacation yeah and you go to their gym you go to their social media page and it's absolutely garbage and you're like okay is it really worth me going to this gym or should i go another like five ten miles down the road because this gym looks a lot better than this one because we get members either through when they Google CrossFit gym near me and then they go look at our social media. And w- that's also how we're getting these uh, events that we're coming in because people are coming and seeing our social media and seeing the space. Uh, but even like I know CrossFit is providing uh, reels and stories. There, there's a library for that that the affiliates have access to. Mm-hmm which is great, but I don't put that on my social media page because those aren't my members and that's not my space. Exactly. And so, how, and how old are they? And and they don't represent who we are. Yeah. But what I've done is I've taken a lot of those reels and YouTube videos and through certain apps, you can extract the audio and the voiceover. So you have the CrossFit paid for voiceover announcer and then i just overlay that on videos of our members in our space so it it feels a little bit more professional Mm -hmm. than me just talking on on the phone and doing the voiceover and those have resonated really well with our followers and the people that are seeing our social media yeah and it's like it, yeah, it's like I, I definitely do think people need to learn how to do social media a lot better, a yeah. lot better, because some some of the gyms, it's like it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, like you really should not post put this on there and, and at least like do some like I they, they may be trying to do some work, but they kind of still don't get, get the grasp of like how it works. But like, you know, like for me with doing YouTube, like I'm constantly looking at like tips and tricks and like right. how to do like how to make this podcast better like reading books and stuff like that you know with social media it's a little harder for reading books because some of them might be outdated but like you may get some nuggets here and there but it's just like just constantly learn how to do it and like yeah okay if you fail whatever or get like don't get the likes but you know you have to make it aesthetically pleasing for everyone to look at it and be like oh okay this is this is this this is the gym i want to go to for like a drop exactly Exactly. it's a creative vibe Mm mm-hmm And no one, and they can't create a vibe because they just don't, they think their vibe that they see and start putting on is not the, like, it's not the vibe that they're really looking for, but they just think it because it's what they like. Uh, Do you listen to uh, Stu Bauer of WTF Gym Talk? No, I, I, I don't. No, he has a lot of good social media tips and tricks. I, uh, because we used to do our social media and I see what a lot of people do is they are posting things for their members and not, for, and they're already there. You know, you've already got their, they're, they're already paying a membership. Yeah. So we're posting things about, you know, like Sally got her 300 pound back squat today. That's not really bringing new people in. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I've really tried to focus on posting things of that's trying to get new members coming in rather than posting a lot about existing members and showcasing them per se. Yeah. The committed club, uh, um, a lot of gyms are doing the committed club and that's really resonated well too. Yeah. I mean, it's cool seeing like people posting about like, you know, doing a PR that day or whatnot, but it's just like, that's not really helping you get more clients coming in. Correct. So, 
But um, so with with your TikTok, you've obviously got I've got more got more subscribers and followers or whatever. So like, what what have you seen for the trends? Kind of are they changing or what do you think about the possible ban of TikTok? So uh, I post mostly on Instagram, uh, but sometimes I'll post on TikTok. So I'm the TikTok ban. I don't think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. No, that's not. It's not. No. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Um, Instagram though, is where most of our new members are coming from and mm -hmm. taking a look at, uh, our social media through that. Um, but I'm noticing that with our reels, we're getting more exposure to non followers on Instagram. So we are, we're using that as mostly as our, our form of marketing right now. Mm -hmm. And even for your page, your personal page, I mean, you're at like seven, almost like 18 K. Yeah. 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 Close to that. So do you, do you think having your shirt off kind of helps out get the followers? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, you gotta give them, you gotta give them what they want. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I would love to do that, but the problem is like, I like the gym I go to, like, I don't want to take my shirt. Like it's your gym. But yeah. Fine. Well, you could do whatever the hell you want, but it's just like, like it's, it's an indoor gym and I'm like, there's no doors to go outside right. or anything like that. So I'm like, I don't want to take my shirt off. Like when I take my shirt off for like a lift or something like that, I'm like, I feel so awkward. Well, in a CrossFit gym, you don't. True. I mean, you know, it's no big it's deal. The, Plus you're in San Diego, the weather is beautiful. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it's like Georgia, like, you know, the winter time is like 40 degrees or probably less than that. Yeah. And so it's just like, yeah, there's no way I'm taking my shirt off for that. No, thank yeah. you. So <laughs> yeah, the, the shirtless photos help a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> note, note to self, start doing that more. So, <laughs> but, um, we're, we're getting close to the end. So, you know, we, I have rapid fire questions, which are not rapid fire. You can take as long, as long as you want. So, um, I know we kind of talked about your goals, uh, in the fitness space. So, um, it's early, it's, you know, a, a, in the month of April. So, uh, what are your goals personal or, you know, business wise until the end of the year? Well, um, so I'm 60. I just turned 60 last year. Uh, and time is flying by. I mean, it's true that the older you get, the faster time goes. Mm -hmm. So I'm really trying to focus on traveling more, uh, and then growing my personal training business and also my social media are the three goals for the, the end of this year. Okay. And anything with say classy, like get like 10 more clients or like how, how many clients could fit in that gym? Uh, so we've looked at the operational capacity of that space. We think we could easily handle 200, 225. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, we're about, half of that right now, 120, 125. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, ideally, if we could get to that number in the next year, it's gonna be hard. Yeah, but yeah, we could handle that. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have a favorite book that you've read since the last time we've done a podcast? Uh, fiction or nonfiction? It could be both, whatever, 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 you know, take oh, so the one book I have reread, uh, that I read got a 1982 that I just okay. reread. Okay. It was, was Dune. Okay. All right. So I, I haven't read the book, but I, I've, do, did you, do you like the, do you like the, re, uh, the remake of it? The first one? That's killer. Yeah. The first one or the second one? Well, I haven't seen the second one yet. So. Well, but well, they made oh, there's the David Lynch one from like the the nineties. No, and not they, not that one. The the the, the, the one that came out a couple weeks. Oh yeah, these are amazing. Yeah, have you, have you seen the second one yet? Not yet. Okay, yeah, I've heard that's like the best movie yeah. ever. So if you haven't read the book, I recommend reading the book. Okay, all right, I got to put that on. I I seriously have like a stack of books like like that yeah. high, just like. A, all the stuff in What's the last one you read that you liked? Uh, so I've read um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Be Useful. So that was 
that was interesting. So it was mainly like, you know, how to be a better person and be successful too as well. So coming from him and like what he's done when he first became into like bodybuilding to, to where he's at now. Um, that was a good one. I've read, um, the success principles. So that was, um, I, it's the creator of chicken soup for the soul. Oh yeah. 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 So he, his book is really good. It's it. I, I really like, it. I'm definitely going to kind of skim through that again. And then, um, before, before the honor sports singer book, I read a quick one by Ernie Johnson called unscripted the uh, Ernie Johnson from like uh, the NBA on TNT. So he talks about how he's like, you know, got into broadcasting, how him and his dad would broadcast together. And then they like, how it, then all of a sudden, like they were talking about like adopting kids and whatnot. So that was a, that was a pretty good book. And now, now the book I'm reading now is, um, the Nipsey, uh, the Nipsey hustle. Um, it's the, it's like, uh, it's, it's like the marathon goes on. Oh, no. So it's, um, it, he's a rapper. So he got shot. Like, so the main, the main thing is, is that he was, um, trying to give back into the community of in Los Angeles where he was living, where it's like not the greatest place to be. So he was trying to give back to the community, community open stores and like kind of be ahead of the game to, you know, say that he's doing something, but he got shot. He got killed like right in front of his store, like a oh, couple of yeah, weeks, yeah. A couple yeah, weeks I... after he got, he got, they opened it. So, but, um, so I'm reading, I'm reading that book right now. Nice. So, um, all right. So, Next question. What is in your gym bag? Cause I know you have a whole bunch of brand deals. So I know you got some new gear. Uh, gainful protein, okay. uh, bear complex grips, uh, RPM smart gear jump rope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, the Haven athletic bag. Okay. Do you like, like how big is that? How big I is that gym that. bag? Okay. I got the small and the large. Okay. Uh, highly recommend it. Yes. Uh, okay. Because uh, you've got a separate pouch for, I use, supposed to put, put like your lifters in it mm. uh, to separate it from everything else, but I put my meal prep in there. Okay. So it's a separate spot for that, but it's basically like a photographer bag. You know, how oh, they get okay. those, you know, for the lenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've made it, kind of reconfigured it for a, crossfitter or gym bag oh cool so everything because i had like uh you know the backpacks and i would like dig everything out of there could never find everything mm -hmm. and this is like you can find anything in there it's really cool that's uh, awesome a pumice stone uh some perfect bars uh in my lifters okay all right cool very cool so um I, I know you've done some brand deals before. So what are kind of the brands that you, you like to work for? And are there any brands that you would love to work with that you haven't had the chance to yet? Uh, I've done work with Viore, which I love. Uh, <laughs> Gainful Protein, that they customize your own protein for you and they can add flavor packets. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Bear Complex. So I did a couple uh, reels and videos for them. They sent me their uh, the new vest with the weight plates. And oh, okay. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, brands that I would like to work with, uh, LSKD, they're here in San Diego. Oh, okay. Another okay. apparel company. Yep. Um, and Noble. Noble, if you're out there. Do you, so okay you since you said about noble do you think they're they're dying what, or whatnot like because they're not because because i remember in semifinals they were supposed to put up boots at know. semifinals I, yeah. and, and they yeah. never they never were there they never did yeah. yeah i don't know um tyr is also getting into the shoe business we have a yeah. couple of members who just bought some of their lifters uh which i think is kind of interesting um they, they, they sent a couple of sunglasses to me. Uh, those are cool. Yeah. Uh, Noble. I don't know. I mean, I've never owned a pair. Um, so I, so, so I have, and there are now my full-time lawn shoes because I cannot work out in them. Uh, so I just, I just can't do it. And, and, uh, the only, so what's the, your go-to workout shoe? 
uh nike metcons so Same. the the latest ones the latest ones the, the metcon eights i think are the, are the mate eights out because i had seven yeah the eights so the newer one i got mine are like white and blue so they're like i know they're gonna get dirty but i, I really didn't care i got them on the outlets for like 60 bucks so i was like whatever Dude. So <laughs> we've now let down by uh, the Mexican border Nike outlet. Yeah. Like all my Nike Metcons down there. Of, of course. Like and, why would, and, why would you do something? Why would you buy them full price? And some of the best, my favorite ones are the ones I bought down there because I would have never bought those colors. Yeah. If I went to a regular Nike store. Yep. <laughs> my favorite pair is a white and green one. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. They're going to go dirty, but they look like they look great. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care. Like I, I, I almost went back to buy like two more pairs just so just to save them because I but then they were like all gone and so yeah. I was like okay I can't but uh for forty nine ninety nine and fifty nine I mean yeah easy easy yeah. but like I I love the newer Metcons because they're they're so good on the rope climbs rope climbs and handstand uh, uh handstand push yeah push. yep but like the first time I did rope climbs with them. I clamped on them so hard and I'm like, Oh my gosh, yeah. this is amazing. Like, I agree with you there. The, the, like where, where were you before? Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm a big, big Metcon guy. I, I wouldn't mind trying rads. I haven't seen any of them in the gym yet. Cause um, I, one of the guys in my touch and go gang group that like we go like once a month live, we, he wears them and he swears by him. He loves them. He thinks like the favorite, their favorite like workout mm -hmm. shoes but i'm like i like i would like to try them but like i don't want to pay that amount of money for, for the yeah. shoes i make like, i'd rather go get nike and you know yeah. 50 bucks yeah so i mean may, maybe tier will come back and knock on your door and rad will come knock <laughs> on your door and be like hey you know we got some shoes for you just promote our brand there you go. so <laughs> um so last question no second to last question so um Let's just say it's your like you already talked said this one before, but like let's just say it's your last day on earth and you have all your friends around you. How do you want them to know you as? Wow. Um uh, someone who listened and someone that they could they could count on. Okay. I like that. I like that. That's awesome. Um, all right. So last question. So where can people reach out to you if they have any questions about like maybe owning a gym, of course, social media, um, how to, how to post content with your shirt off or, you know, uh, or any, any of the questions regarding so, like, you know, two, what you need. Uh, two ways, uh, Instagram, they can DM me at J E F F underscore Z W A L L Y. Or they can email me at J K Z W A l l y at gmail.com okay and and so for the listeners what what's the crossfit gym that you own it's stay stay classy crossfit stay classy crossfit in san diego california from the anchor man yeah so san diego great gym um love the designs there and you know thank you for coming on i i know i know we were supposed to come on uh, a couple like a week ago but I, my wife got tickets to Madonna. I, I got her tickets to Madonna. So in, I, I went with her, but, um, smart man. Yeah. Well, well, we actually, so that little story about that. So we actually left early the Madonna show because she started she, an hour late. She started no, the, the, the concert started at eight 30. Yeah. She didn't, she didn't come on till 10 15. Of course not. And I was like, we're like, what is going on? And then the, the stadium was 80 degrees. Yeah. Inside because she wanted her to her voice to be like, you know, like, you know, save her yeah. voice for singing. And I'm like, we were up in the two hundreds and <laughs> I was sweating so bad. And then it got to the point where my wife's friends had, her, I guess one of her like neighbors was selling the Madonna tickets in the one hundreds. And so she, um, she sent my wife the picture of the ticket. And so we went down to the 100s of, of that seat because they didn't sell, and we just sat there for like an hour and a half. But it was still stupid hot. Like it was. She never starts on time. Oh, it is so annoying. I'm like, just shut. Like, just start. <laughs> start. Like you're like, yeah. And and like I don't know. But anyway. But like at least it was cool seeing getting a chance to see her and you know for the first time. Whatever. Uh, it was it was definitely interesting. So the way they set up the stage and all that stuff. Yeah. So. 
but um but yeah but anyways thank you you know for coming on i really do appreciate it you know it's always fun chatting it up with you and kind of seeing how you're doing like social media wise and the gym wise and you know don't don't be a stranger coming back on here yeah i'll keep following you yeah all right awesome yeah, yeah.